Let, let's get started. Okay. Uh, before we get started, right, uh, let me give a brief introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Balram, and uh, I have been uh, I have been working in IT industry for over a decade right now. I have worked on various tools, technologies, uh, etc. I mean, uh, just name it, and I would have worked on it. Be it databases, be it Informatica, be it big data, uh, the whole ecosystem of big data, be it Python, be it uh, Tableau, be it uh, R, just name it, and I would have uh, worked uh, at least a little bit on uh, something or the other. Name it Java, C, C++. So uh, I have worked on variety of tools and technologies uh, so far in my uh, more than a decade-long experience. So uh, I will be walking you through, and uh, also to give you a background, I have worked in very big MNCs to to a startup to. Uh, to MNC again, to start up again. So I've, I've worked on a variety of places. Okay, so my intention today is to walk you through uh, web scrapping using Python. I'm not sure if many of you understand Python. So I would give a brief introduction about Python before I get started, okay? And uh, just to give you a disclaimer, guys. Uh, okay, uh, even before I, I go on there, right? Uh, uh, I'm not sure how many of you understand Python, but uh, you know, just to give you a brief background about uh, Python. Thank you, Bhivuti. Uh, Python is an extremely easy language, okay? And uh, I'm I'm not sure how many of you read uh, Economic Times or even uh, you know uh, websites where wherein it's given that uh, you know how the world is moving. I mean, what are the technologies that uh, uh, people are using? Um, I was just uh, reading about this article very recently in, in Economic Times wherein it says that uh, m most of us Indian, right, uh, the technologists from India, most of them are still hung up with .NET and uh, Java and C and C++, right, whereas the whole world has moved beyond that to Python. Uh, if, you, if you look at the trajectory of Python usage world over, uh, just in U.S., uh, it's uh, not a long ago. Just open uh, ET, just Google for ET on on technology, right? Economic Times and technology, and you'll be able to see that. Just it came a uh, couple of days back, wherein it says that the usage of Python was low around, uh, very low around five to ten years back, and as of today, Python is being used aggressively by 25 percent of the programmers, which means to say that. The 25% of coding right now happens on Python, whereas uh, you know .NET is maybe five six percent. Java is Java used to be a lot. Java .NET etc. used to be a lot, which has come down significantly. And it's just the start. Trust me, guys. Uh, everyone starting from a programmer to an analyst to a data scientist, they find Python very easy. Now easy and and very, very, very powerful. It's my favorite language, okay? Uh, personally, I just love it, everything about Python. So, uh, not just that, Python is an object-oriented programming language. Who would have thought that Python is an pro uh, object-oriented programming language? All of us normally tend to think that Python is a scripting language. That's a misnomer, you know? And uh, you know, that's what people think. It's, it's a scripting language. It, it might be like cell scripting or bad scripting or any kind of scripting, right? But no, using Python, you can develop websites, okay? Using Python, you can write server side. You can write client, client side programs. You can write any logic. You can write machine learning algorithms. You can do big data programming. You can do whatever you want to do. And the biggest advantage of Python over every other programming language is that, you know, Python is very sensitive about memory usage in any programming for that matter, right? Uh, let's say you define an integer variable, right? Uh, let's say you define an integer variable in C. What happens? As soon as you define an integer variable, two bytes of memory are allocated to that variable. When you say in Thai, two bytes of memory are allocated to that variable, right? And then if you say in J, in K, uh, it's two, two bytes. At some point in time, you know, if you continue to uh, you know, assign variables, uh, or if you continue to create variables in time, in J, in, in K, etc. If you have, let's say, only two GB memory, at some point in time, you run out of memory. With Python, you don't have to worry about that. And there are 
certain ways in python everything is taken care of you will never run out of memory even if your memory is excuse me guys even if your memory is 2 gb and you want to process 10 gb of data you will be able to do that uh, imagine you doing that in uh, what oracle no you cannot do it java you cannot do it uh, c c++ no you cannot do it you know but in python you'll be able to do it uh, i'm not just saying for the heck of it it's actually a fact it's a matter of fact and uh, you know i'm going to show you some beautiful examples uh, wherein you will be inspired by python okay okay any one of you understand uh, you know guys just feel free to type in everything that you want okay you know there is no right or wrong answer you you just type in what you understand with web scrapping and i'll show you something okay i will show you continue to type guys imdb.com slightly not completely okay now movies how about the rest guys no idea need to learn from basics excellent srikan that that's okay right now okay no problem how many of you okay forget about web scrapping how many of you have heard about uh, imdb.com that's easy right i'm sure all of you say you would have heard about imdb.com yeah this, there you go srikan yep you would be yes i Absolutely, Kiran. Scrapping is a kind of extracting data from various web sources. Yes, Tarun. Absolutely, you have heard about it, right? Sarath. Yes, you have. You have heard. Sanjay. You have heard. So what I do normally, uh, if I have to, let's say I want to uh, see some movie, uh, I will not use the term download over here. Uh, that's that's illegal downloading from all those torrent, etc. But then, of course, I can download it from Netflix, etc. Okay. Uh, let's say I want to see some kind of, I want to rent a movie and then uh, the first thing I do is I go and read the review of that movie in imdb.com, right? All of, all of us do that and if you have not done that, you can do it as well, right? Right now, later, wherever you want to. Now, the problem is, uh, 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 just listen to my problem statement, okay? The problem is, uh, I want... I, I am traveling and I want to, I am traveling for a week's time to some unknown remote place, okay, wherein I would have no access to internet, no access to anything, I want my solitude over there. But then I also want to ensure that I am not bored in that place, I am going into the remotest corner of, uh, let's say, world wherein there is uh, uh, no internet available. I want to stay there in solitude, but I want to carry a bunch of movies which are really good so that if I get bored, I can watch them. Now, I go to imdb.com and, uh, you know, I want to see, uh, and I'm, I'm a kind of uh, a rom-com kind of person, so I want to see romantic comedy, or I'm just a comedy person and, and I just want to see comedy movie, right? Uh, I start searching for this on imdb.com and I feel like there's too many tabs over here, too many, uh, I don't, I don't know how to view it, okay? So I think that uh, let me rent 50 movies and let me see the top 50 movies which are available in imdb.com. So what I do is, I write a simple code, okay? The, this is a, yeah, you know, this is a URL for imdb.com with all those search, etc. for the year 2005 to 2014. You see, uh, most voted Feature film released from 2005 to 2014, Dark Knight, Inception, so on and so forth. Okay, now th that was a lame example that I gave that I'm going to remote place, etc. But uh, let's say I want to find our top uh, 100 movies and I want to do some kind of research on it as to uh, the best actor, etc. Uh, if you have heard about uh, a website, uh, 369 or 769, I, I don't remember the name of the website, but there's a data scientist uh, in in US, who has predicted that uh, you know which actor is going to win Oscar, who is going to win even US presidential election, etc. Purely based on data science, right? And uh, he did it via Python. Okay. Now I'll, I'll tell you. You see this: the most voted feature film released from 2005 to 2014. The first is Dark Knight, Inception, Dark Knight Rises, Avengers, etc., etc. Now. Uh, I'm thinking that, you know, instead of going through this, can I write a small program which should pull 
all the let's say 50 100 whatever movies uh, the top movies that that's there in imdb.com so uh, i do this i write how many lines of code that i've written 1 2 3 4 5 6 this is uh, not counted 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 okay so i have written 12 lines of code and what does it do i say okay I don't know what's the problem over here. Okay, let me run this again. Run imdb.com. Oh, my bad. Sorry, I need to kill this because uh, it's printing everything. No. Comment. Now, let me run this. Okay. So, 12 lines of code. Guys, just see this. 12 lines of code and you have everything. Okay. What's the first movie over here? The Dark Knight. What's the genre of that movie? Action, crime, drama. You see this? Action, crime, and drama. And what's the length of the movie? 152 minutes. It's all here. And what's the rating? It's 9.0. In just 12 lines of code, I was able to scrap it completely. Now, this is not even a tiniest problem that Python can solve. It's not even 0.0001% of what a Python is. Okay? This is just a very high level example. Now, uh, Yes, Kiran, it's, it's, it's awesome. Just think of writing this in Java, C, C++. Think of writing this in any programming language and you will, uh, you know, you'll be exhausted by the number of, number of lines of code that you write. It's less lines of code there is, and the second best part, okay? First of all, it's uh, almost uh, 1 is to 20. Uh, when you compare this with Java, if you write 20 lines of code, it's uh, almost like one line of code. Okay, At, at a very high level, I'm not saying uh, it's exactly, yes, Kiran, right? Uh, so uh, if you were to look at Java, it's almost like 1 is to 20. If you're writing 200 lines of code, maybe you are writing uh, 10 lines of code over here, right? Yeah, that's all, okay? And now I would want to show you something, okay? Now, now that you have seen this, let's see some other, uh, you know. Do we need to learn C or C++? Okay. Oh, excellent question, Niti. The the great thing about Python is that you don't need to learn any programming language, okay? Even if you have basics of any programming language, you'll be able to learn Python. See, I don't say you'll become an expert in one day. But I can guarantee you that if you start learning Python in four days, you'll start writing your own program, and in 15 days, you will start writing complicated programs. That is my guarantee. Okay, but it's it it's not that I would be giving guarantee and you would learn out of nowhere. You'll have to make put your effort. But in four days, you'll start writing code, and you will write better code than you would have written in C, C++, or or in Java. What is import at top of the file? Yes, Tarun. That's something I would explain. I am reusing some of the package that someone wrote. Okay, uh, the whole code that I have written over here is based on the package called Beautiful Soup, which uh, you know some someone some developers like you and me contributed to it. There are not just Beautiful Soup. Python is easy because there are many packages available contributed by 50,000 strong developers community who are contributing to Python open source. And that's the reason why, you know, we will be able to use some of these packages so as to be able to do our work very easily. But before going there, right, uh, that's a good observation though, uh, Tarun, you know, I, ideally I would not have explained this uh, on the first day itself, you know, I don't uh, explain this because People might get confused there, but but then good observation. You have a keen eye. So let let me go here and and show you something. Okay. Now, uh, how do we normally define a? Uh, how do we write a hello world program in any programming language? Right. I'm sure all of you would have some kind of programming background, right? Uh, who does not have? Uh, the one who has programming experience would always tend to compare. Uh, you know his his or hers previous experiences with Python, right? He would say that the syntax was like this in C and it's like this in Python. 
it's it's always a comparison back and forth right although it will be easier for them i'm trying to say that even for you who has who does not have any programming experience even srikant right uh, would find it extremely easy to work in python okay kiran says i have been working in python and building web application learning django framework but never worked on scrapping with python currently i want to focus on web scrapping using beautiful soup this webinar will really help me with at least the basics of web scrapping absolutely kiran it will definitely help you but then so as to bring everyone on the same page right i will have to give a brief background of what is web scrapping uh, third uh, what is python in the first place for 30 minutes and the next 30 minutes i'll be concentrating on uh, on web scrapping okay so guys even before i go there right now let me uh, let me give you a simple example okay now there i say how do you write a hello world program in python this is the way i write hello world program okay you see this and if i were to write the same program in java how do i write i define a class class a b c and then i i say public static void main system dot out dot print line hello world close brackets open braces close bracket braces and so on right how many lines of code did i skip over here it's just one simple hello world right guys just look at it okay how do i assign an hello world to a variable okay i say a equal to there you go the absolutely balakrishnan there is no syntax at all it's it's just awesome program okay it's just awesome programming now having gone through this right let's say uh, let let me try to make it uh, little, little more uh, complicated not even complicated i'd say uh, let's take it one step further now i want to only print hello from hello world what do i do i say a of uh, 0 2 0 1 2 3 4 you see this the way i am using i mean if i were to do this in let's say sql right or anywhere right what do i do i would say sub string and then i would use in string or if i if i were to do this in in java i would use some kind of functions etc right now in case of python it is extremely simple okay you just say i want the words from 0th index to 1 2 3 4 to 5th index 5 minus 1 i mean it takes from 0 to 4 right so 0 1 2 3 4 total 5 it just gives me hello okay and from 5 till the end it gives me word right that's the beauty of python so there are a couple of things in python which are uh, really important also called as sequences okay there are a couple of sequences called as list dictionaries and python Uh, i am not sure how many of you have uh, you know have heard about big data etc uh, if you have that's really great if you have not uh, that's no rocket rocket science either okay with dictionaries is something similar to key value pair it's it's map if you don't understand just forget forget about it okay list these are all sequence and they are similar to okay it's list dictionaries and not python sorry this tuples okay my bad okay excellent sanjay you have heard about that right so list dictionaries and tuples are sequences okay so uh, we'll 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 see that later as to what list dictionaries and sequences are but trust me i'll just give you one example and then move on okay if i say one two i say apple ball cat dog right in list there you go list of 0 will give me apple list of 1 will give me ball list of 2 will give me cat so on and so forth okay so it's extremely simple the way you slice and dice the data and hence it is one of the most preferred language of all data scientists as well as it's becoming 
uh, preferred language of uh, you know developers as well. Okay. Yes, if you say list of ten, you'll obviously get an error. You see, and why do you get an error? Because it says index error. List index out of range, which means to say that you have zero, one, two, three. If I say list dot length, okay, one second. I say dir of list and pop index and then say list dot. Don't worry about it, okay, guys. Don't worry what what I'm writing. List dot count. Okay, count take exactly one argument. Okay, the yeah I should have done this list dot count of appl apple will give me one. Okay, but all I was trying to show you was if I say you see here I was trying to show you this. Okay, now if you see here when I say length of list right it gives me four so if you try to access anything beyond four it will give you an error okay sanjay now now time to move on to something more interesting okay uh, web scrapping now what's web scrapping like i told you it is scrapping of a web for example i want to scrap this data how do i scrap this data in the first place right i scrap this data by first uh, reading this website right and how do i read this website if if you right click on any website and then say view page source you'll be able to see the source code of the page isn't it okay and once you have done that now the second part right how do you scrap the data so as to be able to pull the data that you want okay before that guys uh, Guys, can you give me a quick confirmation, all of you, whether you have, uh, uh, do you have any questions on, uh, you know, the simple things that I've explained over here? Okay, and good, Sushikan, is Python, is machine dependent or independent? Okay, okay, excellent. So let, let me answer you, Sanjay. So what, all you have to do is, uh, uh, you know, download an EXE, Python 2.7, Python 3.2, what, whatever uh, you'd like to install. Just download it. It's an EXE. Double click on your Windows machine, and then uh, you will be able. You will also install along with something called as Idle. This is an Idle, right? This is also Python 2.7.8 shell. It's an Idle. Uh, on that Idle, you'll be able to work on it. Okay. Or the other way to do would be uh, download uh, PyCharm, right? You can download PyCharm as well, and uh, you'll be able to work on it. See, I, I work on PyCharm and I work on uh, idle uh, interact, I mean interchangeably, whichever I, I want. Okay, is Python a machine dependent or machine independent? So, uh, Python is an interpreted language, so it's a uh, machine independent language, okay? Okay, Sarat, will Python work on Windows 8? Absolutely. Apart from Windows, Python comes in auto installed with your Linux machine, your Mac, and and even okay uh, okay I was reading about R this morning so Python comes in default installed with Windows and Mac okay in okay sorry Linux and Mac in Linux you get 2.7 as well as 3.2 versions in the, installed in Mac it's uh, 2.7 SCN and uh, will Python works on Windows say it absolutely it'll work on any version any flavor of Windows Linux Mac. What's the difference between Python 2 and 3, Vinay? The difference between Python 2 and 3 is that there are certain packages which are still not uh, compatible with Py Python uh, 3, but uh, the most widely used Python version is Python 2.x, okay? So, mostly, uh, you know, you, we, we will be using, uh, we mostly use Python 2. I use Python 2, 2.x, sorry. Okay, uh, now back at home and using desktop apologies, I could not respond to few of your questions. That That's okay, Krishna. If you have any questions, do let me know, okay? So, guys, uh, okay, it's time that uh, I ex I take you through some of the, you know, some of the things related to web scrapping. How do I scrap a web? Okay, it's, it's a good question. Now, let's see how to scrap a web. Although, guys, uh, uh, 
if you are not able to understand something, right? I'm straight away moving into the topic of the subject that we promised we will discuss. Okay, uh, because see here. Now let me just quickly walk you through PPTs. Uh, now I've not even shown you PPT. I, I I just forgot about it. So let me show you what PPT. Uh, so PPTs. So this is what I do, right? I generally like to uh, give. Uh, I generally like to take people through hands-on. I mean, PPTs or uh, all these uh, statements and sentences is something which you can read online as well. There are numerous uh, documents available, so I I generally avoid using PPTs, etc. But but let let me take you through this. Objectives at the end of this module, you'll be able to uh, you know understand what's web scrapping. We, you'll be able to understand beautiful soup package. You'll be able to scrap IMDb website. And uh, we'll not touch PyDoop for now. Okay, so these are the three things that we will do. Now, okay, we'll not go into legality of it. I, we all know as to what web scrapping is. Web scrapping is uh, pulling the data from uh, structured or, or unstructured data, which is uh, website. Okay, most functional most website do not offer functionality to save a copy. Now you know all this. You can read about this later uh, as and when you have time. Web scrap why it's quick easy way to gather huge amount of data with less effort. So that's the reason why you need to scrap web. And web scrapping, uh, there are many packages. I am, I'll be going to, I will be using Beautiful Soup. I will explain to you as to what Beautiful Soup is. And uh, uh, popular web scrapping packages are Pattern, Request, Scrappy, Beautiful Soup, and Mechanize. These are, uh, there are many more, uh, not just this, there are many more packages as well, but these are the more common ones. Typical HTML structure. Okay, this is how your typical HTML structure looks like. Now, now let me move back. Right, this is this is not very interesting. Let me go here and explain to you. Now I say from info b a u t i f u l s u u p. Okay, so what I have done is. I am. I have a package by name BS4. Inside that package, there is something, a function, or you know, sub module called Beautiful Soup. I would use that Beautiful Soup in order to scrap a website. Okay. Now, first of all, I would not even scrap a website. All I would do here is. Now, this is a. What's this called? This is a simple HTML page. Okay. If I, if I open this simple HTML page. You see, this is. It gives you this, right? First paragraph, hello students. This is basic HTML2, blah blah blah, right? Some information about. It, okay, so now how do I scrap this web? Okay, the code behind this is this, right? The code behind that website that you saw is this, isn't it? Right. So uh, this is what I would do now. Let me do this. Uh, Full path to clipboard, and I would say, let's say soup equal to my b e a u t i f u l s o u p beautiful soup, and I would say open this whatever file which is inside my this location. I'll, I'll explain to you as to what uh, what I'm trying to do. Okay, guys. There you go. There you go. And then if I say soup, there you go. Okay. So, guys, all I did here, okay, all I did in the first place is I. This is a standard that I have to. Do. I'm saying from BS4 import beautiful soup. Okay, which means to say that I want to use beautiful soup as a package. Now, once I have done that, this is just a variable, right? I am using this beautiful soup to open a static HTML page. Guys, are we clear? And then I'm just printing it. When I say soup, I'm just printing it. Or I can say print soup. This is just a variable. Okay, guys, are we clear so far on these two lines? Okay, now Kiran. Coming back to your question, right, Kiran? The reason why I use two double slashes, either you can use two backslash or one forward slash. Okay, uh, that's the way you will be able to read a file in Beautiful Soup. Okay, 
either double slash or one forward slash, whichever way you are comfortable with. Okay, Kiran? Okay, excellent. Now, now the first thing, okay, now in this example, right, oops, see, just a second. In this example, this is already aligned, right? HTML already looks beautiful. It's head here, HTML here, a head here, title here, simple web page. But there will be circumstances in which this will look hot spot, right? This might not look beautiful. And in those circumstances, right, will you not find it very hard to see how this uh, looks like, how the HTML page looks like? You'll not be able to read it properly. So, which first thing for you to do is to beautify, okay, or prettify. I want to make my code, if it is not beautiful, I want to make it beautiful. So, the literal statement of which is, I say print, and I want to prettify, I want to prettify my shoe. So when I do that, you see here, it will properly align your code. Okay guys, so what did I do? Now, the next thing, yes Kiran, it's, it's awesome. Now, you might be like, you know, you, might, you guys might be thinking, where am I getting all these functions, right? You guys might, might be thinking, I mean, I don't know where these functions are coming from. I don't know what, what they mean. I mean, until and uh, unless I study the package, you know, how would I ever know if I am a newbie to Python programming, how would I ever be able to tell, tell that prettify is the command that I need to use, right? Valid question, guys. I mean, if I were in your place, I'll be asking the same question. So, okay. Understand. I understand your problem. I understand your question. So, I say dir of soup. This will give you everything, every method that you can use with soup. Okay guys? Now, now that, now the next question arises, right? I mean, this looks like a, you know, hell lot of methods. It's, it's insane, right? No intelligence. It, it is there, Sanjay, there is IntelliSense, uh, you know, you will be, a, but then you will have thousands of methods. How, how do you put which you want to use, right? So even with this, there are thousands of methods or functions, right? And then you still don't know. I mean, it does not even have a description. It, it makes no sense, right? This, this is what you might be thinking. I don't understand this. How will I ever understand? Okay, no problem. So, uh, Let's take, for example, what does RAM do? I don't know. Even I don't know. Even in spite of working for so very long, guys, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what all of this method does. I only know those methods which I have used. Or, for example, if I feel that, uh, you know, uh, I need some kind of method, I go and Google for it first, right? And then when I find an example in Google, I come back here and then I try to implement it. Okay, that's how I do it. Because there are tons of packages that I've used. There are millions of functions that I would have used, and I don't remember all of them. My, my memory is not that sharp. So, but then I know that this function might be available in that package, so let me explore that package. I have that sense at least, okay? So that's the only thing that I'll be able to impart to you, okay? I'll be able to impart to you the sense using which you'll be able to figure out your own course. You'll be able to chart your own course, okay? Now I say so. I don't understand what wrap is, right? So let me do a double click on it, copy, and then I say, I don't know what wrap does, right? Uh, do I want to go to Google? I don't know, I don't want to go to Google right now, or uh, Google is not even allowed in my office. So what do I do? I say, say uh, I do this, and then I say, let me see what happens. There is no documentation. Then I'll have to go and read the book. For example, list, List was this, right? DIR of list gave me this. So I did not know, let's say for example, I did not know what a sort does. In most package, let me show you first. In most package, you will have at least one liner documentation available with it. Sadly, you don't have that beautiful soup. Now, 
it's not because you don't have it that you're not able to see it. It's because I only download it from BS4. I only took beautiful soup. I did not take the document part of it. So let's not go there. Okay, let's not complicate things now. I say list of my list is this one, right? List has apple, ball, cat, dog. I say list and this is the sort function that I want to see list dot sort dot underscore underscore doc which means to say that give me the documentation of this list and the method sort okay and then it says a sort is compare none key none is a stable sort in place compare x and y if uh, it's minus one if x greater than y minus one x equal to y is zero x less than y it's one so this is the output that you would get it's a one line description if you need more description you are free to go to python.docs.org and you'll be able to see the entire documentation of beautiful shoe okay so now moving on now uh, now that we have prettified it right i say print shoe dot pre prettify there you go right now that I have seen this soup.prettify. Okay, now that I've seen this soup.prettify, uh, I want to access some more, right? Uh, let's say I want to see, uh, I want to see the title. I just want to see simple web page. What's the title? I say mm, print soup, and then in the soup, I say T I T L E title. First of all, let, let's do one thing, title dot, okay, there is no string, my bad, one second, print two dot, okay, there you go. The functions displayed would suggest method reading XML doc. Yes, Krishna, this functions, I mean, if you can relate name to something that is reading XML doc, which is good, but then, uh, the way syntax are structured might be a little different, so you will have to look at uh, uh, the methods from at least syntax point of view. I think uh, that's what I understood from your question. If I did not understand it, uh, you might have to rephrase your question. Okay, so there you go, guys. If I say print sue dot title, I just get title. Simple, right? Uh, I say print so dot title dot let's say I want to go a step back it's a parent oh there is no parent spelling mistake there you go so when I say what is the parent of title it is head so from here to here it should give me the data from the head to head and I get the data from head to head or I can say print head it also gives me the same thing so guys, are we clear so far on this? You tell me whether you're clear or not and I'll have a glass of water. Okay. Now, can you, Rahul says, can you show this print soup.html? Okay, print soup.html. You know it, right? Now, Rahul, I'm sure you were able to understand this. Okay. I saw functions like uh, next sibling, iterative, get previous, etc. So thought it would be like uh, etc. It, it is. It it traverses your HTML. Okay, it's it is like XML processing, Krishna. You are not wrong. Okay, Sanjay. Okay, Bala Krishna. Okay, Krishna says clear, clear, clear. Krishna, Ram, uh, Kiran. Okay, Abhilas, Sai, Sweta quite easy till now. Okay, excellent. Will it return complete HTML? Yes, it did, right? Okay, Krishna, excellent. Sarat, Abhishek, okay, excellent, guys. Now, we'll do one thing. We'll explore a little more, some more, right? I say print soup.title. You know what soup.title is, right? This is title, it comes here. And then I say mm, next, okay? Soup.title, okay? Soup dot title t i t l e 
soup.title dot next and why is it giving me an error soup dot we'll see we'll see why it is giving me an error soup dot title dot append children clear contents okay. see I told you I don't remember everything okay there you go I told you I don't remember everything I have to visit it I say soup dot title dot contents what's the content of title it's a simple web page what type of web page it is? It is Unicode. You see, U means it's a Unicode. Okay, and it also gives me that there is a new line here, right? After title, there's a new line. It comes in a new line, so it gives me everything. Now you might be like, uh, but we have uh, two p tags, so how to get only one? Yes, Rahul, I'll I'll get there as well. You can say, okay, just to answer Rahul first, okay? So dot body dot p dot next right you get first paragraph first paragraph okay and then you want to get this one right I say next dot next you is unicode sweater okay I get hello students next dot next I get hello student right and then if I say soup dot body dot Okay, one second. Soup dot HTML. Just give me a second, guys. I just want to show, uh, you know, because I think uh, Rahul has asked me this question. I want to show him uh, HTML dot body dot p dot next. It's just that uh, you know the reason why I am not giving all the details is uh, because uh, you know I'm I'm not trying to make it complicated for you guys. Okay, there you go. Right, Rahul, you are able to get it. So. Uh, We'll, we'll have to first learn A, B, C, D, and then only we can learn A for Apple, B for Ball, etc. Right? So uh, we'll, we'll we'll go step by step. Okay? We'll we'll build it slowly. I mean, if I take you here directly, you might not be able to grasp it as to what I'm what I'm telling you. But I, if I build it slowly, you'll be able to understand. Okay? And you'll be able to appreciate it much more. Now, okay, uh, guys, forget about all these things that I've done over here. Okay? Forget about everything. We will only stick to soup.title.contents and it gives me the content. Now, even I. But where did Python. Okay, Dhananjay is saying he does not understand anything about Python and where is Python mostly used. Okay, okay. very good question, Dhananjay. Th thank you that you asked this question. Now, let me tell you where is Python used. Google search engine was first made in Py Python and then they redesigned it in their proprietary language. Amazon Web Service is completely built on Python. Okay, uh, YouTube is completely written in Python. Okay, and Hortonworks Big Data Framework is completely written in Python. Okay, and uh, what else? Most data science that is being done in majority of the companies doing analytics. Uh, what about PHP? They are used as well. We say. Uh, they are used in bits and pieces, but uh, it is not used like uh, the way Python is used. And uh, let me tell you this, okay? Uh, I read an article about Google sometimes back, okay? If you want to get hired in Google, learn Python was uh, the statement by uh, Google chief technical officer. Is Apache Hadoop? No, no, no. Uh, Apache Hadoop is not written in Python, Tarun. It is written in uh, Java, but you can write your map reduce everything else in Python. The architecture has been done in written in Java, but everything else can be written in Python. Okay, you you know it, right? Abhishek? Oh, you know uh, Python. I I'm not sure. I I'm not sure if I got your question. But web development and most of the web things I have done in PHP. Absolutely, you can do it in PHP. You can do it in Django. Uh, you know, these days developers prefer Django because the turnaround time of developing a website in Django is uh, extremely fast. Okay, and Django is again another version of Python. Okay, Vinay, good question. Vinay is asking me how do I compare Python with R? Uh, I would say Python is much better than R. R is only meant to be used for implementing models, right? Uh, machine learning type models. Okay. Uh, 
any model that you can take, you know, support vector machines, decision tree algorithm, your K-mean, KNN. Uh, it's, it's, it's basically used for statistical model R, whereas Python is an object-oriented programming language, which can also implement statistical model. R is in-memory operation and Python is not. So I like Python much more than R, okay? I programmed in both. Srikant, could you tell me what is the application of Python in biological sciences? I mean, uh, in in case of, uh, uh, let me tell you the example that I did. I have not uh, practically used it because I have not worked in any biological application as, as such. But I have read that it has been used in uh, genome sequencing using big data somewhere. I, I don't remember the place, but it has been used. Not, not just that, you know, I keep reading these white papers and blogs and uh, Python has many more uses. I, I can talk about it for three hours, actually, Srikar. I mean, just from what I have read, okay, but practically I have no experience as to how Python is used in biological sciences because I have never worked on it. So as it is easy to switch to Django, yes, Abhishek. No, 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 I learned in around three days. Abhishek, okay, I will tell you one thing. After learning for three days, you might have thought that, you know, Python is easy and you can you can do everything with it, you can program in it, but uh, three days, that's what I said, three days, you'll start, you will learn how to crawl, but you will never be able to learn Python until unless you have spent sufficient time on it, okay? You have learned how to crawl in Python, and Python is very, very, very powerful. Okay, excellent. I mean, if, if you are working on it, if you are working, excellent, I would say. If you, are, if you are already doing it, if you are already working on it, I mean, it's no rocket science at the end of the day, right? Very good. I'm sure you'd have learned about Lemma Jais. Uh, okay, you might have used some NLP. You have used NLP as a package. Uh, maybe you, you'd want to try it now. You know, some of the packages uh, available for text analytics as well. Anyways, uh, unless we know big data, can I relate Python? You don't need to know big data for, for Python, Srikant. Uh, Python is independent of big data. Krishna, sometimes I need to log on to a page and then extract information. Has Sue got any functions to make it easier? Uh, yes, Krishna. So now I've, I'll show you a couple of uh, this and uh, I will be able to share uh, some of these examples with you as well later on. See here, uh, for example, if I want to go and log in to, let's say, Google Finance, okay? Okay, Google Finance. Now, why does not it come? Let's say I want to log into Google Finance and scrap some data, right? Now, that can be done as well. Let's say start. But right now, I think it might be uh, the New York Stock Exchange might not be working, so uh, the data might not be here. Okay, now let me try to run it. See, this is my scrap finance data, okay? I want to scrap data for SAP, IBM, TC, TCS, Oracle, etc., etc. Quarter March 15, it's not pulling other data. I don't know why. But anyways, uh, I'm, I'm running this code after a long time, so I might have screwed it up somewhere. So, point is, you will be able to do that. Krishna, you'll be, log in, you'll be able to log into any page. You'll be able to dynamically insert data as well on that page and retrieve data as well. So uh, I have written many web, web scrapping examples wherein I have scrapped data from various websites, okay? Does it have header file? How does compiler get to know about so many functions which we are using con continuously? Uh, Chirag, you see here the, the number of packages that I have downloaded. These are, the compiler will understand the package, okay? You see this KNN, KBN, these are the packages that I have. The compiler will understand the package, and this package will have methods which will help you, uh, you know, use the function or retrieve the data or whatever, whatever it is. Okay. Pallavi, in developing for what purpose Python is used? Okay. Uh, let me tell you. I'm I'm using Python to create a website, Pallavi. I have used Python to create a website. I have used Python to write a data science application to write a statistical model. I have used Python to write map and reduce in, in big data. I have used Python to, to be a scripting language like Unix cell scripting. And I have also used Python as an object oriented programming language. So hopefully that helps you uh, answer your question. Vishrut, the discussion seems to be ad hoc. I'm unable to comprehend what I'll achieve. Okay. Okay. 
I I'm getting a lot of questions, Vishal, and uh, and I need to take uh, some of those. Okay. Uh, now, Swetha, how to write code in PyCharm? Uh, it's a uh, it's it's a tool. See here, uh, it's an ID. All you have to do is write your Python code, and uh, it should be it, it's like any other ID. I I am using Py, PyCharm, Tarun. Okay. Uh, now, guys. Uh, so, like, like Vishru told, right? Uh, we are deviating a little bit from topic. There are many more questions. There are uh, many of you who are uh, very keenly interested in in Python. I understand that I might not be able to uh, answer all your questions, but keep writing all your questions, guys. What I would do is uh, after this class is over, after I've explained you certain stuff. Uh, you know, I will take this question and maybe get back to you by an email. Okay, or or what you can do is you would get this PPT. You can go here and then you can you can post your question on uh, you know in in Twitter on on Facebook or you can call and and get all this information. Okay, we we will try to help you as much as we can. And the second thing is that. Okay, I, I know about Tableau. Okay, okay, Tableau it is a data visualization tool, Pallavi. You can integrate, uh, you know, you uh, you can integrate R with Tableau. You can integrate Python with Tableau. You can integrate uh, Tableau uh, with. Okay, you can integrate Python with with Tableau. That has been done, Pallavi. So. Okay, maybe I did not understand your question then. Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, continue to ask your questions. Uh, yes, Rahul. In internally, it will be converted into bytecode so that Java understands it. Okay. But uh, guys, keep posting your question. Let me take you through some more examples and then uh, and then let, let's stop our class here today. Okay. Now let's stop our session here today. Now. Now again, if if I want to, uh, let's say I want to find all the tags, right? Uh, for tag in soup. Now these are some of the packages, or these are some of the functions that I I will use. These are very powerful. What what do you call it? Very powerful regular expression type functions. Now, what do I do? I say for tag in soup dot find all, find everything, and then I say print tag. Dot names. So you see this. What are the tags that are available over here? HTML, head, title, title, body, p, b, blah blah blah. All the tags. Okay. And now I am too lazy to. I just need the con content of this website, right? I don't care what's their tag, etc. So what I do is I say mm, print soup dot get underscore txt now some of you you'll find this interesting and there you go based on this as a delimiter find only the text now I say I don't like this right I, I don't like the way the data is being displayed though. so what I would do is I say print soup dot get underscore text and I say just delimited by this one and skip everything else. Strip all, all those unsound stuff. Simple web page, first paragraph, hello student, this is basic HTML. Simple web page, first paragraph, hello student, this is basic HTML2. Now, guys, this is where I would like to stop, okay? Now, we would be sharing some examples, uh, real time examples on IMDb, web scrapping, etc. You see this. We'll be sharing with you. Just have a look at it. Get back to us, and we will help you uh, answer any questions that you might have. Just to confirm, we'll have access to the video of the entire session. Correct? Yes, absolutely, Ravi. You will have access to the entire video. How Python is related to Hadoop? Python, Dhananjay, is not related to Hadoop, but you can program entire MapReduce or your UDF in in Python. And it takes, uh, you know, it takes it 
just takes 1 by 16th of the development time that normally Java would take. Okay, how do we, okay, Pallavi, okay, okay, no problem, Pallavi, how do we get access to these examples? Uh, uh, the support from Edureka will, will send you all, all these examples, Anupama. Okay, so guys, uh, keep posting your questions, keep asking your questions, uh, you know, tweet us, uh, you know, send us feedback on the, on Facebook if we get uh, more, uh, let's say, if if you guys need more of this, you you can you can talk to us about that on Twitter, and then and then we'll get back to you with more sessions. Okay. Is is it based on C, HTML, or Linux? It's based on C, Pallavi. Absolutely, Dhananjay, all, Dhananjay, all of you will get access to this video and uh, some of the examples. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. But before you go, okay. Before you go, please don't forget to give me feedback. Okay, I need your feedback. If you give me feedback, if you if you tweet about us, if, if you write to us, we will be able to present some very interesting ads, interesting thing. I am working on some interesting thing. Maybe next time I will purely concentrate on those stuff. So, but before that, we have to read a little bit of about Python and come back. Okay, uh, Sancheta. Uh, to start with, there is a cookbook on Python. Just uh, Google cookbook on Python. Okay. Okay then, guys. Uh, have a good good night, guys. You guys all take care and uh, keep studying, keep reading. Okay. Take care, guys. Bye bye. Thank you, Balakrishnan. Thank you for your time, man. Thank you, Anupama. Thank you, Pallavi. Thank you, Shota. Bye, guys. Good night. Thank you, Sai. Thank you, Shota. Bye bye. Thanks Rahul, Abhishek, Kiran, Rais, Gita, Sweta, Sarat, Ram. Thank you guys. Thank you all.